Aloha and welcome. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about dictionary nesting. So we've talked in the past about how with a dictionary, you have keywords and values, and those values are objects of any type. So being of any type, we can also have them be dictionaries. So if you have a dictionary where you have a keyword that associates to a dictionary, and that dictionary could have a keyword that associates with a dictionary, we can nest dictionaries within dictionary values there. So we just can make these nested uh, sets of dictionaries. So um, this is a very powerful feature. It allows you to build rather complex data structures. And by data structures, all I'm really talking about is a method of organizi organizing your data into logical and coherent uh, uh, units. So uh, you can make it up to fit whatever scenario you have. I believe in the book, they use a scenario where you've got a grade book and you can have your top level dictionary, which is gonna have your different students. And then it can be assigned to a dictionary that actually has uh, like homework grades, quiz grades, test grades, things like that. So you can build up the complexity layers there. Um, you can also have like, uh, not just uh, when you have like your homework and grade, you don't have to just have one grade, you can have a list at that point. So then you just have to, you know, figure out your way of uh, traversing through your data structure that you've built. So um, when you're building these out, if you're putting all your data in at one time, uh, go ahead and use, uh, uh, make use of the fact that you can split it across lines to make it pretty so that it's easy to understand when you're looking at it because the white space doesn't really matter uh, in that sense. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you and let's pull that up in code. So I've made a simple uh, dictionary object here, a, a real dictionary. So I'm using uh, a language dictionary. Uh, I just set up language dic as a blank dictionary. And then I go ahead and to uh, make my first item, I'm gonna make a Japanese dictionary. So I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna use the square brackets. I'm gonna put in my keyword, which is gonna be Japanese. Then I'm gonna assign it to this uh, dictionary. So I have my squiggly brackets, the curly braces or whatever. And then I say for pen, uh, keyword pen, I've got pen, then pineapple, it's pineapple, then apple, which is lingo, and then pen, which is pen again. And you'll notice that I've defined pen twice here. And what's interesting is it doesn't matter that I've got it in twice because the second one will overwrite the first one. So uh, then uh, I go ahead and I add another uh, thing here just by specifying uh, the square brackets. So I add French and I add the words uh, always to toujours, the uh, right now to tout suite and unfortunately to malheureusement. So um, when we wanna access elements in here, we can do like print, oops, let's make that correct. And then we're gonna do language dict and then we just say Japanese. And then that is gonna to return to us the dictionary. So if we hit play, it will send us the whole dictionary back. And that's nice. If we wanna see a specific item in there, we add another bracket here and then we give it the keyword name. So we'd say pen and that will bring us back pen, the katakana for the word pen. So um, you can do rather complex things here. Uh, if I wanted to have, let's say, uh, multiple things here uh, for Ningo, because sometimes you have more than one way of saying a thing. So Ningo is one. Then you have uh, the katakana, which is apuru. Oops. So you'd have like this. So now if I wanted to uh, print out apple, it would give me this. It would give me the list. So you would think, okay, now if we're gonna go through the structure, that adds a little bit of complexity to going through the structure. But let's think of a way that we can go through the structure and uh, list everything. So the first thing we would do to go through this uh, nested uh, structure, uh, we'll do an outer loop. So we'll do a loop through the, uh, the names like Japanese and French. So we'll start with uh, for language in language, but it's not, we're not going to say, you know, we, this doesn't really give us what we want. What we want really from this is the keys. So we say, hey, give us the keys from this. 
and then just uh, let's, you know, because we want to build this iteratively and, you know, you know, slowly but surely, we're going to just test this out and we're going to say language dict of language. And that would give us, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, hold on. Okay, so that's going to, uh, essentially, when we go through each language, it will give us the associated thing, which is the dictionary. So we got the dictionary for uh, Japanese, then the, the dictionary for French. So that works as we thought. But now we want to dig in a little bit further. So now we don't just want to print out the object. We want to loop through the objects. So we do kind of the same thing we did here. We're going to do another for loop. And this for loop is going to be for word in language dict of language, because this is going to be for each of the languages we're looking at here and the keys that are associated with it. So we would do it off of the, uh, let's say the language dict language and word, I believe this would be. So if we hit play, we would get each and every uh, well, actually, we get the uh, values associated with it because what we're asking is we're asking it for the language dict for the language and for the word and because we're going through each word here. So we're going to get the value part in each one, which is what we're getting, pen, pineapple, lingo, and apple. But here's the thing. We're getting back a, a list here. And that's fine. That's what we want. We've got uh, you know single items here, but then we have the double items. So now we're going to have to come in here and say, hey, if we're going to have just one thing there, let's print it out. But if we have multiple things, we're going to have to print those out, you know, one by one. So how do we do that? Well, there's there's a number of ways of skinning this cat. Uh, there's a there's a function that you don't know about, and you don't really need to know this right now. It's uh, something that I'm just going to throw out there and you can forget it instantly if you want. But what we're going to do really is we're going to check to see, is that object there, is that a, a string object or is that a list? So because that could technically be a number or something else, we really want to be testing to see if it's a list. And if it's a list, then we're going to do something special. Otherwise, we're just going to print it because it's a non-container. Well, it could be a tuple or something like that. Let's not get into that part. Let's just say it can be, you know, we, you know, something like alphanumeric or it can be uh, a list. So we're going to check for a list here, essentially. So the function that you would use is this thing called if is instance. And we're going to put in the object here, which is going to be this value right here. I don't want to retype it, so I'm going to be lazy and put it up here by copying and pasting. If that is equal to, oh, no, hold on, that's not what I'm wanting to do. Uh, if is instance of this thing, of this object is list, which is a keyword here. If it's list, then we're going to do something special that I don't want to define just yet. Else, uh, else, we're going to do what we were doing before and just print it. So now if I run it, I should have everything except this line print right there. So let's see if that happens. And let's go back. Sure enough, we Apple did not print. So that's good because uh, it's detecting that Apple, uh, that Apple one was a list. So now what we want to do is we want to print out each value in there. So now we're going to add in that extra layer of uh, looping complexity. So we're just going to do a for loop over it. So for uh, definition in, what do we call that? Uh, so it's this object here. So for the language, given the language and the keyword. So for definition in that thing there, we are going to print. I'll just steal this and paste it because I'm lazy uh, for the word, but now we're going to have it for the definition. So you see, we're just adding on, you know, one after the other. So we know that this language dict language word here is a list. So then we just put our, you know, our, our, uh, our square brackets and we specify which item it is. And the item is going to be definition because we're looping through each and every one of them. 
So when we print this, we should get an error just like this because I've messed something up. Exactly. So it says list indices must be integers or slices, not string. And that is correct uh, because what I'm doing here, I have tried to tell it to get uh, the word of definition. And the problem with that is that you cannot do that. So what we're going to do here, uh, just hold on for one second. Uh, what we're going to do is modify that. So the problem is uh, I've put definition here, and that's not actually what we need to do, because I've defined definition here as being each item in that word that we've already gotten. So this is this list right here. I'm getting each one. This is overly complicated. I actually just need definition here. So this is all I need to do because this right here is a list and I'm getting each item in that list. So we go up here, we run this again, and sure enough, here it is. So if you look, uh, we've gotten pen and pineapple, then lingo, then apple, which is lingo and apple. So it's going through each item in there. So this is how we add complexity to it. If everything is the same here, if you just have like a one item corresponding with something else, it's simple to do just your two loops here. But if you have a little bit of complexity and you have the possibility that, hey, that may not be just one item, it may be a list of items. In that case, you'll have to do that inner loop here, you know, or will you have to test to see if that's a list or not? You know, one thing that you could do is enforce that everything here has to be a list. And if everything is a list, it's either a list of one element, zero elements or whatever, then you could just take out this is, is, is instance part and assume that you've got a list there. And then you've just got a, a you know, a three level, you know, a, a three level type uh, uh, loop there, a nested loop. So anyhow, that's one way of doing that. Uh, but uh, I, I tend to make complex data structures like this. I'll do something where I'll have like, uh, you know, Apple can be a string or maybe it can be a, a list of strings or, or something like that. And then you just test, you know, within your code to find that out. But again, is instance, that's not something I'm, at, you know, I'm asking you to learn here. It's something that I just wanted to uh, throw in there to show you in a real world example, how you would do something like that. So there's lots of different ways of solving this. So when you're making a, a project, when you've got this idea or you have this need, you think up really your data structures. You know, data structures are, you know, one of the most important things, uh, you know, to think about, you know, so when you're coming up with the idea of how it's going to look, you also have to understand how you're going to be utilizing that data, how you're going to go through your data, how you're going to traverse it to get your values out and everything. And doing that, you may need this kind of complexity, like a some kind of a thing check and see what type of item that is. And if it's an integer, you do one thing. If it was a string, you do another thing. If it's a list, you treat it a different way. So you can add that complexity in here inside your loops and everything. But what I really wanted to show you was, you know, when you're doing a nested loop, you can put all that complexity in that you need. You can make it as complex or as simple as you want. So that's really uh, the crux of this. If you have any questions, because I know this probably is confusing, it's confusing when you haven't really used it that much. Try coming up with your own examples. Try to think of real world things that you might be wanting to design. Let's say you have this idea for, let's say, a, an address book, and you could do address book, and you could have the first uh, key value in that to be a person's name. And then you could have, let's say, a dictionary that would have uh, address, phone number, things like that in it. You can make your own things and then you can try making you know, something to loop through it. So <clears throat> I did something like this recently. Um, just to give you an example, I was writing, I wanted to come up with a random uh, person generator for some Salesforce data because I, I used this uh, customer relationship management system called Salesforce. And I wanted to generate random people. So I did something, at the simplest form, you could just have 
a dictionary of people and addresses and things like that. So I created a, a random person generator and I had it randomly select first last names. And uh, I also uh, took those first and last names from like a list of uh, uh, people from the Hawaii census back in 1970 something. And then I took a list of all the street names in Hawaii and just made gener I made uh, random numbers for the things and then the associated uh, zip codes and stuff like that. But the idea was I needed to store it. And when I had to store it, I stored it in a dictionary like this. So I would just have a uh, language dict and I'd have like the person's name and then the other information associated with it. And that's how you use it. You just, you have a situation and you come up with the idea of how can we best store this? And then once you've done that, you have to think of, okay, when I'm accessing this, how am I gonna go through the data and you know do that? And that's often where you're gonna end up looking through uh, your different, uh, Know, using different uh, loop structures to get to things. And then you can have some conditional statements in there, testing out what kind of data you're dealing with. But uh, I know this looks complex. Just come up with your own ideas, try an idea out, try to access your data, try to modify your data, do things like that. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to work with you on this. Uh, I know this is gonna be confusing, so don't worry about it. Uh, send me an email, uh, reach out, we'll set up a Zoom meeting. Uh, if not, I'll see you in the next lesson.